All right, everyone, we're going to talk about science today. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more support. We're going to be looking at physical and chemical reactions. And what I want you guys to understand is that um, when we're looking at these, I'm going to do a little bit of um, guidance to help you all through some of it. Um, as you can see how you're recording, but we want to be able to understand the difference between physical and chemical changes because um, scientists use those to determine what is happening in our world. Um, a physical change is one where things are mixed together and no new substance is created. For example, if I, looking at my salt and pepper shakers right now, if I mix them together, I could easily separate the salt and pepper. It'd take me forever to pick out every grain of salt and pepper, but I could separate them. Nothing is new. There is no created substance. However, um, if I look at my coffee right now and I'm um, I put in a little bit of creamer, there's a new substance involved now. That is a chemical reaction. And we're going to see some of the ways that scientists determine that because they, they don't just look at it and say, oh, that's easily separated. They actually have methods and indicators and tests to see how that works. So we're going to go ahead and look at some of those things today. And I'm going to work through the schismo a little bit through the first activity. So you all can see a little bit what that might look like. Now, I want you to do the activity with me, which means that if you're watching right now, don't just look at my answers and say, oh, like, this is exactly what it's supposed to be. I'm not actually going to fill in the answers. I'm going to show you kind of how I'm thinking about it as I'm working through the gizmo. I want you to also go through it um, and work with it. So you might need to pause this video at separate times to help you through this so that the other two are a little bit more accessible. Now, if you are looking at this vocabulary, you may want to have your vocabulary list up with you that I've attached onto the assignment that will help you understand some of the things that are happening. For example, if you look at endothermic, I do a little bit of definition in line here for you all, but you might want to say, ah, oh, what's endothermic again? Oh, yeah, that means that something is getting um, colder. It's uh, pushing it's bringing in heat, it's drawing heat from your body, which means that it's going to feel cold. That means it's endothermic. Exothermic means that it feels hot. Um, but having some of those resources with you might help you remember when you're looking through these questions and understand them. So let's look at our, some of our prior knowledge schema. Assume mixes baking soda and vinegar in a glass. Oh, good, we did that. That's your sodium bicarbonate is your baking soda, and your acetic acid is your vinegar. Results are shown at left. Yep, we've seen that. Do you think any substances are being created in a mixture? If so, how do you know? We talked about this. Go ahead, whatever you remember. So this is done top of a balance. This is also a scale. A balance is a fancy scientific term for scale. And you think the mass would change the reaction proceeded? You guys actually know the answer to that. You already did that. What do you think what happened to the master reaction took place inside a sealed plastic bag? Oh, you did this. You actually did all of this. So that'll help you understand what is going on. So it gives them a warm up. A chemical change or a chemical reaction occurs when one or more substances called reactants, so the things that are being mixed are called reactants because they're reacting, are transformed into different substances or products, creates a new product. The chemical changes gizmo, you will look for evidence of chemical changes by looking at changes you can see, touch, or smell. Pretty simple. Your three of your five senses, you're going to be using them, but you're going to be using some tests for that. To begin, check the reactant one is sodium and reactant two is water. So if it's a metal so soft, you can cut it with a knife. That's pretty interesting because certain metals are pretty soft. And some, a lot of things classified in chemistry are metals, but we wouldn't consider metals like steel or iron, but it's considered a metal. So let's go into the gizmo. Here's our reactants. Reactant one is sodium, I already have it up. And reactant two is water, perfect. So then let's go back to our gizmo, which is right here. Click play, what do you observe? Okay. And I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna click play. Maybe that's what I'm seeing in the water. Ooh, ooh, I saw some little things popping up. Um, it's now cloudier, all that stuff. So those are things I'm gonna put in here. I saw it looked like some gas in there. Um, gas came out. 
Um, it looks cloudier now. Not sure. I mean, there's some other things. It's wider. Maybe I'll watch it again because it's just cool. Yeah, it did. Wait, let's look at the scale. So everything together is 388 grams right here. Do you see that? Press it at the end of it all. Ooh, 387.9 grams. So it's lighter. So do you think a chemical reaction is taking place? That's for you to determine. Do you think so? Do you think the substance were something new was created from the mixing of the two reactants of water and um, sodium? Okay, that's your warm up. Those are the kind of things that we're doing. So I'm going to show you a little bit of activity A. Um, just how it kind of works, I'm not gonna answer the questions. So you need to determine for yourself the questions. That's kind of what the intrigue is. So like I said, again, you're gonna want to do these with me. Don't just let me do the work for you. I'm doing a little bit for you because you're gonna have B and C, but don't just do the work. Like do it with me, else you're not gonna learn anything. All right, so we're gonna get the gizmo ready. We're gonna click reset. We're gonna check the reactants are sodium and water. We're going to turn on the label reactants checkbox. Okay. So let's go back to the gizmo. Sodium and water. Yep. We're going to go label reactants is checked here. Um, I can already see it checked. So I have water here and sodium here. And I have reset. So label reactants checked. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so this talks a little bit about it's important in which new substances are formed, a physical change, no new substance is created. Um, so you're going to determine if a chemical change is created. Some chemical reactions release heat and others absorb heat. In an exothermic reaction, heat is released and the temperature of the system rises. Things get hotter. In an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed and the temperature of the system decreases. Things get colder. In the gizmo, drag the thermometer into the flask of water. Okay, so here's my thermometer. I'm gonna drag it in a glass of water. Okay, it starts at 21 degrees Celsius. So I put that here. Click play and watch the reaction end. What is the final temperature? Ooh, 59 degrees Celsius. So you're going to put that here. So is the reaction exothermic or endothermic? So based on the definition of the words, do you think it was exothermic or endothermic? You're going to put that answer here. I'm going to change this to Y. Tell me why it was exothermic and why you think it was endothermic. So two families of chemicals are acids and bases. Okay. Acids and bases can be detected by an indicator, which is a substance that changes color in the presence of an acid or base. Okay, so an acid is something like battery acid, right? Hydrochloric acid, it's something, it, it dissolves stuff. Actually, it's, it's interesting. So acids usually are classified by dissolving inorganic materials. So an acid is gonna be really bad on things that are not living, that are not carbon-based, like people or plants, animals, things like that. Bases are more dissolving of carbon-based things, which is plants, animals, um, those ideas. So acids react a lot with like metal. So if you put hydrochloric acid on like a steel beam, you're gonna see a lot of bubbling, a lot of fizzing. If you're gonna put a base on like your skin, it's gonna burn a lot. Um, um, I deal with this a lot at the pool, so we use a lot of acids and bases to make sure that the pH of the pool is right and healthy for you guys, because um, some things live better in acids, some things live better in bases, like different um, bacteria, so you want to make sure that it's, it's neither of those. Um, and then we use an indicator to do that, a uh, pH indicator. 
So we're going to use phenol red as the indicator. So if you look here, uh, phenol red, it's yellow in an acid. Orange when it's neutral, like water. Water is neutral. It's neither acid or base. It's just right in the middle. And pink in a base. Okay. We're going to click reset again. We're going to use phenol red. Let's drop that in. All right, the pH start is neutral because it's water. That is unsurprising. All right. Which says that it shows neutral. Click play and wait for the reaction to end. What does the indicator show? All right, so here's where the indicator is. We're going to click play. Ooh, something different happened and it shows it here. So you're going to have to look at that. All right. Ooh, gas collection setup. This will be fun. All right, so we're going to hit the gas collection setup. So observe, click, reset. Hit the gas collection setup. Can you use this apparatus to collect any gases produced in the reaction? From the reaction flask, gases travel through a long tube into a cylinder of water. As gas bubbles into the cylinder, the water is displaced or removed until the cylinder is filled with gas. So here's how that works. So this stopper makes it so that things can't escape the flask. Here's your sodium. So you pull there, this pin is going to get pulled. The sodium is going to fall in, and your gases are going to go into this tube down into the water, and it's going to push the water out of the, the gas is going to bubble up and push the water out of this. So all that's in this tube is the gas that's released. So let's hit play. You see how the water is going out? Now this is all filled with gas. Here's what's interesting. Look at the weight. Look at the mass. Mmm, doesn't change. That's nice. That's real nice. Was any gas produced in the reaction? How do you know? Does this tube have water in it anymore? So what must have gone in there? So one way to test what kind of gas is in the cylinder is use a glowing splint. Basically, they take a wooden stick and they light it on fire, then blow it out. So it's just a little ember on the end. Um, when they put it into a into that gas, if you have got carbon dioxide, if you've got gar carbon dioxide or ammonia then the splint's gonna go out. If it's oxygen, then it's gonna burn really bright, right? Because it's kind of starting a fire. And if it's hydrogen, it's gonna pop. It's gonna kind of explode because hydrogen is super flammable. Uh, if you don't know about the Hindenburg, hydrogen is super flammable. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna press play. It's gonna go through. Okay, gas is coming through. You see the bubbles coming up, all that good stuff. We're gonna do our glowing splint. Ooh, that looked like a pop to me. So if that's the case, the glowing splint caused a small explosion based on this chart, which gas was created? Okay. So this stuff, what I'm doing here So the yellow ones are challenge questions. I want you guys to try them and attempt them and kind of look at it. I'm gonna explain how to look at a chemical equation, which is tough. Um, it's actually kind of a next year thing. But what I want you to understand with this, I don't want you to get too stressed out with these. C is not a challenge question. That is one that I want you to really think through and work through. How do the products of the reaction relate to the phenol red test and the splint test? What, like, how, what can you tell from the products? Here's how a chemical reaction works. So chemical equations are a way of that we can show the way atoms are working within a, um, 
a chemical reaction. And you can see the number of atoms on one side and the number of atoms on the other. Now, there's a lot of ways to figure out the number of atoms in a system. That's kind of some high school chemistry stuff. We're not going to go into that. Um, but basically, we can boil it down. We can weigh products and reactants and all this stuff. And we can use the general weight of the singular atoms to go ahead and figure out the distribution of the atoms within the equation. And so if you go into this, so it says turn on show chemical equation. So a chemical equation is a shorthand way, which means it's kind of an abbreviated way to describe a chemical reaction. Symbols represent the elements, H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, and A for sodium. The reactants are to the left of the arrow, and the products are to the right. For example, in the equation H2O2, H2 plus O2, H2O, shows the reactants are hydrogen and oxygen combined to form the product H2O or water. Makes sense? So when you have two hydrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms, they move together, the product is going to be H2O or water. Now, it's not necessarily balanced because if you look at conservation of matter, and we'll talk about this later, H2 plus O2, we're missing an oxygen atom. So it's not necessarily a balanced equation. So you'd have to do some work with that, and I'll show you in another one if you're really interested in that. Um, that actually is an activity B that you guys will go through on your own where you can do a little bit of thinking around that. If you don't quite understand it, that's okay. You'll get this in high school. Not a big, actually, you'll get in eighth grade. Not a big deal. All right. So if we go into the gizmo, and we say show chemical equation. 2Na, that's your sodium. So your reactant one is always going to be this left. It's called 2Na. 2H2O, um, or your water. So you have two atoms of sodium plus two atoms. You have a atom of sodium. Sorry, I hit this button. That's going to be later. An, an atom of sodium plus a molecule of water, which is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms, those are going to combine when we hit play, you get all the stuff that you get sodium mixed with oxygen, hydrogen, and two hydrogen atoms. So this solution here, this molecule is in here. Remember the glowing splint caused an explosion, a gas was created, right? So that is our hydrogen went up into here. So what are the products in this reaction? You're going to get sodium. It's called hydroxide. You guys don't need to know that, but it's NaOH. So sodium, oxygen, hydrogen all mixed together and hydrogen. So these symbols represent sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Chemicals that contain hydroxide ion are bases. Okay, so that's important to understand. OH, so anything with an OH after it, or anytime you see this right here, you've got yourself a base. How do the products of the reaction relate to the phenol red test and the splint test? So now you get to think through, well, if I'm thinking through the splint test, how did using the splint test, like what does this mean in relation to the splint test that we did where we caused a small explosion and the phenol red where we see this and that turned pink, right? And we talked about, well, the ending product, what is its pH? Is it an acid or is it a base? And so you're going to relate this test and interpret how these tests help us determine the properties of this, these two um, products that came out of this reaction. So you're going to do some thinking around that. What does the glowing splint tell us about these pro products or what we can interpret from these? And what does the phenol red tell us we can interpret about these products? And then I'm going to let you do activity B on your own. Again, if it's yellow, do the best you can with it. Um,
do the best you can with it, but don't stress over it. Okay. Um, yeah, that should be it, guys. Um, remember, I'm putting in two to four hours of work. I'm going to give you this to work on and then some reading for today that I want you to be thinking about as well. Um, this isn't something to stress out about, but it's something to complete. But do you guys notice how quickly I was going through it? I wasn't kind of wasting time with it. I was going to type in stuff. Um, this one activity took me with all the talking, took me about 20 minutes when I'm looking at this. Um, so it'd probably take you just a little bit longer, maybe 30, but all told, um, it shouldn't, it'd probably take you about two hours if you're, if you're working pretty consistently on it. Um, that being said, I'm going to give you an hour of reading again to do your reader's workshop as well, um, where I want you to get into your books. Um, at the end of this, and you'll see in the assignments, I'm going to give a focus question that I want you to be thinking about. Um, and that focus question at the end, the big thing I want you to think about is determine chemical changes this is what I want you to answer at the end how can scientists determine how chemical changes can affect the world around us what do you think these have to do? Why do scientists focus on these so much? Why do they care? Why is this something that we might think about? And so I want you to do some musing on this, um, maybe about a paragraph worth of thinking. Okay. If you have any questions, um, I'll set up some office hours today at two where you guys are definitely able to get a hold of me. Um, I can do some Zoom. I can go through stuff, but um, come prepare with questions. Don't just tell me I don't understand any of it. You understand some of it. You do. You have that agency. I believe in you all. You just need to believe in yourselves. You understand some of it, so do what you can. And then come with specific questions. I don't understand this part, and here is why. Um, it's very difficult for me to answer questions or to teach off. I just don't get any of it. I'll just say, well, rewatch the video and tell me what you don't understand. So help me out with that. Um, I'll see it too if you have more questions. Otherwise, um, happy experimenting. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later.